Okay, good evening everybody. Uh, I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. It is Thursday, October 27th, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. Jackie, please take the roll. President Janner? Here. Vice President Riley? Here. Commissioner Egan? Absent. Commissioner Ensign? Here. Commissioner Heidi? Absent. Commissioner Todd? Here. Commissioner Young? Here. On matters from the public, uh, Jackie is anyone from the public sign up to speak. No. Okay, we'll move on then to uh, new business. First liner item under new business is the administration building renovation project. Move to award the contract for the administration building renovations project to Can Do Construction Incorporated in the amount of $45,360. Second. Any discussion? I just have a quick question on the, on the construction there. Why are we putting in a contract? That would We also don't realize that res patrons do stop in to, to meet with staff. Um, we want to make sure that staff can not only work out of that area. Right now, it's just more of a service area. Yeah. So it's going to be like a workstation slash service area just in case there's someone were to stop in. We have staff there rather than someone like bringing a buzzer and having it come out from another room. Uh, so we're going to rework that. Plus, we have some other improvements that we plan on adding to uh, part of this project. For instance, we're looking to add a larger production printer in the mail room. So we'll be pulling new electrical from the uh, mechanical room downstairs to the upstairs area. So that's all rolled into this one. And the main counter that's in the administration building right now is really active. It's set up as a transaction counter. Um, this will actually uh, create to where it would be two uh, workstations that staff would be able to work out. So it's more like a receptionist. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, Jackie, please take the roll. Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Egan, absent. Commissioner Edson? Yes. Commissioner Heidi, absent. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next item is item B, minutes. Move to approve the regular meeting minutes of October 13, 2016. Second. Any discussion? Jackie, please take the roll. Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Commissioner Egan, absent. Commissioner Edson? Yes. Commissioner Heidi, absent. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Jan. Yes. Uh, moving on to uh, discussion items. Uh, first discussion items is the uh, truck purchase. Yes. Uh, included in the weekly packet was a memo that was out outlining our intent to, to replace our fleet truck. This vehicle is used to walk to the field for road, road calls and whatnot. Uh, the vehicle is 13 years old. We've gotten a lot of life on it. However, now the engine is starting to fail. We're starting to get high levels of fuel to pollution in the oil. It needs new cylinder heads. It's not worth the repair. So we're going to ask the board to approve that purchase. And you know how many miles are It's uh, close to one. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Okay, travel reimbursement policy. That's me. Um, just wanted to make you aware of there is a new public act um, that we to um, change our current policy uh, that applies to both employees and to board members. What I'd like to do is just highlight a couple things tonight and then in the next week we pack it, send it out, and then put it for approval by ordinance um, at our first meeting in November. So really the new public act is requiring that any kind of overnight travel, and this will stick to start with the board first, um, be um, approved um, on a form um, ahead of time or not approved, but designated with an estimated budget that would then go to, to rate to the executive director. And this is outlined in the statute of what we need, in the public act of what we need to do. Um, we'll be calling out the board's travel um, budget during our workshop, and that, then that eventually gets approved by the board. Uh, any kind of board travel, this is overnight, has to be approved in an open meeting by a roll call vote. This is after the fact, not ahead of time. So um, what we'll be doing is on the face of our agendas where we approve the monthly disbursement amount, we're going to just call out and board, board approval, just um, board travel and whatever that dollar amount is. Our travel is so low here, um, it's not anything significant, but these, this would meet the requirements um, of the public way. So the board approves its own travel? Promotion. Yes. Yep. And it, okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So, and on the employee side, uh, we have pre-approval forms that Ray would need to approve. Right. Um, 
Um, we've always had um, a reimbursement travel policy, as you know, as a financial policy, and then this is just adding a couple steps to that, where now we're going to have a pre-approval form, match that up to an expense report form at the end of travel. So um, you'll see those changes in here. Um, not significant for us because we already had a process in place. We just need to tweak um, what we have over there. One other thing I'll mention, you'll see a $3,000 per trip per diem limit. That is not what we're saying people spend, but that's our cap that if anyone estimates spending over $3,000 for a whole trip, a whole conference, you would have to go to approval and an open meeting to do that. We do not ever spend close to that amount, um, but we wanted to put a cap on it that was reasonable for some states for travel, but that we would never really hit that $3,000 mark. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, as you may know, we've added a couple of uh, discussion items. The next one is the Ride Assist Naperville Agreement. Yes, uh, the Park District, we were recently contacted by representatives from the Naperville Senior Task Force. Uh, actually, the uh, Friar Patterson and Karen Corning, who are here this evening, uh, regarding a new initiative uh, called Ride Assist Naperville. Uh, Ride Assist Naperville is being set up as a nonprofit organization with the mission of providing low-cost transportation to seniors to be able to access their uh, medical and dental appointments. Um, they are just beginning this initiative and approached the Park District to uh, ask if we could assist with providing office space, uh, so a desk space that they would be able to work out of, take phone calls in order to make appointments and, and reservations. Um, we do have space available. We have a desk located, located at the administration building that would be available uh, for we to move forward with this. Uh, we have begun drafting an, an agreement with Ride Assist Naperville uh, that would outline the provision of the desk space and then what they would be required as far as insurance requirements and so on to, to be part of that. Uh, this was discussed with the Parks and Recreation Committee last Friday. Uh, there's additional information that I left at each one of your chairs uh, tonight uh, prior to the meeting but we wanted to bring it to the full board for discussion because the next step would be finalizing an agreement uh, with the Ride Assist Naperville to provide them with some office space and then bringing it to the board for approval in the future. Yeah, I, could, I just from the uh, Parks and Rec, uh, Rec Committee, uh, we did uh, discuss this and unsupported it. So we're talking about the admin building? Yes, uh, we did uh, look extensively at the Riverwalk Community Center because at first uh, we thought that this would make sense to have this program or have this representative right. work out of that facility being the senior center. Um, unfortunately, all of the spaces that we looked at, just, we could not find a space that would uh, that would work without displacing some programs. Uh, and likewise with the activity center being a gathering place, same, same story there? Correct. Okay. So would we, would we be providing any equipment at all, telephone running? I believe it was uh, a phone line and then the desk, uh, okay. and that uh, Red Assist Naperville would provide their own computer. They would provide their own software that they would uh, then utilize for making the appointments. So they hook up to the network? Uh, yeah. Through our network? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Any, any comments or anything? Uh, no, we're just looking forward to it. We're excited about being. I don't know how many drivers have already applied. Yeah, I've got about 37 drivers now. That's about five more than we had last week. So and they're all volunteers. All yeah. volunteers, yes. They're yeah. eager to go. Yeah. It's going to explode when we finally get it going. Open chairs. Okay, any other questions? Okay, uh, the next item, uh, again, an add-on item, Sportsman's Park, Trap Shooting, Fields, Naming Request. Yes, this was also discussed at the last Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. Uh, we were approached by representatives from the Naperville Sportsman's Club Board, uh, two of which are here tonight, Ray Corney and Tom Coleman, uh, with a request and actually a resolution from the Naperville Sportsman's Club Board to name the track fields at Sportsman's Park after the current board uh, president uh, for the club. Uh, Jim Monk. Uh, Jim has been the Naperville Sportsman's Club president since 2002, uh, has worked extensively uh, within the club and with the Park District uh, for really the, the betterment of the facility and the betterment of the, the programs that we offer there. Um, and so the board wanted to bring that to the Park District for our consideration uh, as far as uh, naming the trap fields 
uh, at Sportsman's Park and Jim Lumber Trail. And, and again, the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee uh, discussed this uh, and is supportive of the uh, naming request. And there's, I also uh, provided at uh, your chair this evening uh, additional information uh, in regards to Jim and the contributions that he's made that came from uh, the Naperville Sportsman's Club representatives that uh, presented at the Parks and Recreation Committee. Any questions? Yeah, thanks. Do you guys for coming? Any comments or anything? I think Brad has laid out fully uh, what we're interested in doing, and the document that we passed out, uh, Brad passed out, has got a lot of specific details as to what Jim has done for the club, the park district, and the community. And uh, we are all excited about this. We feel the man really deserves uh, this kind of recognition. We certainly hope uh, the, the board here approves all that. What we would do is the next step is uh, at uh, possibly the next meeting in November, uh, actually bring in action for uh, naming trap fields, which would then start the 60 day uh, window time before it would be officially voted upon and then named as that. Okay. Any other questions? And then our final uh, item is This is the last item that we wanted to uh, bring this evening as a discussion item, also from the Parks and Recreation Committee uh, that was held. Um, as many of you know, uh, or you all know, Dick Strang, uh, who was instrumental with the Naperville Little League program, recently passed. Um, and we were approached by the Naperville Little League Board with a request that the Park District consider naming Knock Park Field Number 5, uh, which is the field that's used by Little League uh, at the corner of Martin and West, uh, Dick Strang Memorial Field. We had further discussion with the Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, the committee uh, seemed to be in favor of moving forward with such request, and so we wanted to bring it this evening to the, the full board for, uh, for consideration and discussion. And, and again, the Parks and Recreation Committee discussed this and is supportive of uh, the naming. And uh, interestingly, talking with some people uh, afterwards, uh, one of the first questions was which field? They said field five, they said that's the one. I guess I do have some concerns about naming um, one of the ball fields after Dick Strang. I think that respectful discourse with the public is really important, and um, I don't think the answer is that. I have a couple of experiences with him. Um, one of them was when um, my son actually, uh, both my sons were on um, the Orioles, and we had, uh, it was a playoff situation, and we had finished our practice, and. Um, <coughs> We were coming over to the field, I think it was field five. And um, when we entered the field, I was actually behind. You know, all the kids ran ahead. Um, we got there, and Dick yelled at the team in the dugout, got in the face of the coach, and said, You have to get out of my park. You are in black pants. Black pants are against the rules. You guys must forfeit and get out of my park. So the kids come running to me, This is young, he's throwing us out of the park. He says it's his park, and we're getting in the park in black pants. So by the time I got there, the coach, actually, of the other team, had come up to our coach, and they decided that the black pants then would be fine. But he dropped off bombs. He didn't care that the other kids were around. Um, and he and he tried to throw people out of the park. I mean, I, that that's one instance. And, and another instance, which I mean, honest to God, it was 30 years prior when my husband worked for the park district, and he was aligning the field. And um, Mr. Strang got to the field, um, and my husband was lining it, and he yelled at him for having mowed the field, um, that he had specifically instructed that, that field not be mowed, and why has it been mowed? And, you know, he was just like, I feel, I line fields. I'm 20 years old, and I, have a chalk liner. You know, two different instances, 30 years apart, um, I just, I have a problem with with respectful discourse, and I guess that's what I'm trying to say with that black. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I know there are a number of uh, anecdotes uh, like these, and, um, uh, you know, obviously what Commissioner Young is describing, I think would be unacceptable to all of us. 
Uh, with all that being said, I think you know I try to look at the big picture in this case, and um, this this man really put forth a lifetime of service uh, to make real the league and uh, and the community, and and obviously, um, as you know, Dick, you know, can be certainly very particular on on certain things, but um, you know, with the, and trying to keep the big picture in mind, I think that um, Dick is deserving uh, of this honor again uh, for for a lifetime of service uh, to the community. So I would uh, I will be voting uh, yes in support of this. And I apologize for not mentioning earlier. Uh, Mike Fichetti, who is the uh, Naperville Little League uh, Board President, uh, is here. He joined us uh, this evening. Uh, so certainly, if there's any questions uh, for Mike or, or in regards to the thoughts of the Naperville Little League Board, he's, he's here to be able to answer. Sure, please. Uh, like Commissioner Young, I've not had uh, direct experience with some of these situations. But in, in talking to residents, I have heard it uh, more than one time, and frankly, long before. Uh, this naming request came forward. Uh, from my standpoint, I think I uh, tend to feel somewhat like Rich does that, uh, well, not perfection, um, the total body of work uh, would lead me to be uh, supportive of this. Uh, although I would go on the record and say that, uh, you know, instances I've heard from you know, more than one person about uh, interpersonal skills, to put a real generic term on it, uh, were not the best uh, on an overall basis. Was there benefit to the community? I think there was. Um, I don't know Dick Strain and I'm not involved with any of the Little League and uh, um, I'm a little concerned over the um, um, stories that uh, Commissioner Young has, has said. Um, I think we have to look at what we're all about and does it fit with our mission and values for the park district and I think I'm gonna to to think a little a little more about this, about whether or not it seems appropriate. Because if he you know, it's one thing to be dedicated to the to the little league, but it's another thing to be uh, how, how he acted in front of our little league players and whether or not he presented what I think we want in a person um, to be recognized for for such a you know I think so. Uh, I may have to think about this a little bit longer before I think I, I can support it. Sure, that's my thoughts. <coughs> I, I, I know the strength thing, but I don't want to be Okay. Any, any, uh, th thanks for coming. Any, any comments from Europe? Yeah, I, I would, um, I would agree with, with some of the comments here. When you look at, um, a honored, an honored veteran, Dick Strang, was in the, the Army of the Paratroopers, was recognized for his hard work, um, at least on one instance, um, received recognition for that. Um, came out, had two or three kids, I think it was two, two boys, three, uh, two or three, and raised children uh, in Naperville, uh, had a passion for baseball, and had a passion for the field that what we know as knock five today. Um, I've been involved with Naperville Little League for probably over 20 years and have known Dick for 20 years. And um, honestly, the, the, um, the relationship that I had with him was, was uh, uh, adversarial at, at best. Um, I'm current president of Naperville Little League. And you know, when I, when, as Rich said, when you look at the big picture, um, a hundred percent of the time he was for the kids, hundred um, percent. And I don't think that there's anybody that you'll run into that will not say that his heart was always in this for the kids. Um, the, the clashes that he had with us as adults were, were more from um, just his interpersonal skills. You know, as uh, Mike said, the uh, interpersonal skills were probably not the best. But, you know, his heart, 95, 98, 99% of the time, were all about the kids. And I, I've been uh, talking about this for many years, 5, 10, 15 years, with a number of coaches, board members, other individuals associated with Naperville Little League, and there's always been that, that hesitancy of, of 
naming or pushing to have this um, this field named after him. Sure, he wasn't a perfect person. He would, if he were here today, or he were in this room, he would admit that, um, which to me is, is is tremendous. So what what I'm asking for is, yeah, you know, we all had our little run-ins with Dick, but he did some things that made Naperville Little League the most recognized baseball program in the state of Illinois. We are the largest baseball program in Illinois. We have tremendous um, offerings that we give our kids. Um, we've had professional athletes that have come out of Naperville Little League, handfuls of professional athletes. And, and a lot of that was, was Dick. Um, so, sure, let's put aside our, our personal personal vendettas and you know I, I'm hoping that um, you can dig down deep within yourself and, and vote yes for this. Um, and, and one of the things that we mentioned to Brad is not only would we like um, the, the knock five field, which is the major field, the fenced in smaller field with the lights on, right? The one that's right on West Street. Um, he cared for that field for like 20 years. He had a lawnmower, he was in the Naperville Sun at least one time um, talking about you know, his, his love for the game of baseball in Naperville Little League. Um, not only putting a moniker on the building, Dick Strang Memorial Field, but also having a tagline of he did it for the kids, or this is all about the kids, which is what he did. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. And what we, I uh, had a follow-up discussion with Mike on the, uh, the thought of having the tagline, this is for the kids, and the thought would be that uh, possibly incorporating that into a plaque uh, at the field if we were to, to move forward with this as for the district. Um, the thought would be, and, and I guess uh, try to get some consensus tonight on bringing this forward to the board uh, at the next meeting for a vote that would begin that 60-day vetting period um, if the board would be uh, in favor of is there been any discussion with Dick's family at all, so that they're aware that this is being discussed? Or? I, I met with them at the funeral last week and, and asked them, I said, the board has um, has recognized Dick and would like to carry forward to the park district, or to the, to the district, to see if um, we could name this field that way. And they said that would be fantastic. Um, so I, I don't know what their aspirations or expectations are, but yes, they are aware of Especially Brett, who is who runs Galaxy Soccer, which I'm sure kind of ruined. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we keep the family in the loop on what we're doing. <laughs> I spoke with Brett on Tuesday. What we're contemplating. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to note of caution on the plaque. I kind of had to sign off on that particularly. Sure it. As soon as we allow anybody to put up speech that's not ours, then you have to allow everybody to put up speech. So it would be fair for people to put up plaques that objected to. I'm not sure what we're going to create a public forum. That's the rule of public forums. That's what yeah. it is. Well, what's interesting about this is this is somewhat controversial, which the person we're talking about this kind of exemplifies what he was. Uh, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. I think, I think I'd like to see us have a little bit more discussion. I'd like to get a little bit more information and have the other board members before we put it on the, the uh, agenda to, to approve it, to start the clock. Because I don't think we're ready for it yet. So what are we uh, trying to think with the protocol here? So Jim, you're, you're neutral at this point, and what are you? I'm right, for it. So we, if we are basically Three to one, and not sure. Or three to two. I mean, what is, what is the protocol as far as an agenda? Let me, let me uh, ask our council. What, what is the where are the formal steps going forward? Well, you've got to direct us to put it on an agenda for a formal vote to start the 60-day clock. Right, and, and at that point, there would be a vote at that meeting to start the clock. Right, and then after the 60-day comment period, then we have another vote. Correct. To adopt or not adopt. And just to clarify for the policy, the naming of a park amenity and the length of time the naming must be approved by a five to seventh vote of the board of commissioners. 
so it's not the majority, it's five to say that. Right. Yep. So what, what, as for the business of getting it on the agenda, what, what does it take? I mean, if we, got, if we currently have three people that are saying yes, one person saying no, and one person that's maybe leaning towards no. Well, the obvious the, the thing is you put it on the agenda and the missing board members show up and it goes 4-3 no. You, you've not done the family any right. Right. benefits. So to uh, you know, Commissioner Todd's point, you know, uh, one, um, you know, if you directed us to put it on there and uh, not without having consulted Commissioners Heidi and Egan um, as to what they'd like to do, you run that risk, but otherwise, uh, a three to two vote puts it on the is a directive to put it on the agenda. It's not substantive, it's procedural, it's a consensus, so you can do whatever you want here tonight. But it's just with, and, uh, that's the reason we're so deliberate about this, is we don't want to embarrass anybody, All right? But we do have, uh, well, we have a quorum now, we do have another commission that's on the way, so we could table this for a period of time until that. Yeah, but you're, uh, what he's saying is it's okay to, to, to. We can talk about it in two, in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. If it's on the agenda though, right? Yeah, yeah my, my, my yeah. caution is on the agenda. Right. Right. So, so I'll put it on the agenda. Right. 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 Okay. And then right. something right. happens where, you know, the, I just don't before know. Not, two weeks from now, and it's a 4-3 vote right. not to do that. Right. Right. Or people it's, come to it's speak. Like those, it's like those famous appointments that Mayor Pradle made to commissions and the, the board rebelled, and those two poor people who, for no fault of their own, you know, were said, no, you're not worthy of being appointed. It's, that's a, it's a question of, and you're doing it on TV. Just <coughs> if we were going to go forward in two weeks, we could always table it, right? Right. If it was on the agenda, we could just put it. Or, or remove it from the agenda prior to the meeting if we could uh, talk to Commissioner Heidi and Commissioner Egan and find out that they're opposed and then. No. There's no way to remove it from the agenda. Could it also be brought back as a discussion item at the November 15th meeting? all seven members are here and then be able to participate in the discussion. I don't think there's any perfect solution. I just think we need more discussion on this. I mean, let's get the full board. That's that's where I'm at right now. And I'd like to get more information myself before I make a decision. Well in part that's what the sixty days is for is to get more information but Yeah but I'm not sure that I even want to start the clock until we as a board um, know what direction we want to take. And I'm not sure that we're, we're certainly not in complete agreement. I think most of the time when we go through to rename, you know, some entity that we, that we have, that we're pretty much a, a majority of, 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 you know, in agreement. So I just think we need to try to get there. We're not there. So we move to table, I guess, I'd like to move to table this until the November 15th um, workshop for uh, we call our meetings. Uh, well, meeting. November 15th, is that the special budget workshop? Yeah. So to the special meeting on November 15th. That one is a special meeting. And everybody should be there. It wouldn't necessarily be a motion to table it, just move bring it back to the discussion. Yes, bring it back. Just bring it back. So you're finding out more information. I mean, what more information are we going to get between now and then? Are we going to request more information from, from the Lily Board? Or uh, what, what information do we need that we don't already have? Well, I certainly have the opportunity to go talk to some other people to yeah. get an opinion okay. of um, you know, other folks that have interacted with this person. Because I'm not familiar with them. And let's see where they stand. Yeah, Maria, I think, I think your point is well taken because, because there is some was called controversy. I think it's an appropriate time to seek out more information. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and, you know, I don't mean any disrespect to the family at all, and I hope that it's not taken that way. Um, uh, it's not really a personal vendetta, just just to be clear. Um, I've, I've listed much more chef bombs than that, but 
in reality is that I hold our leadership uh, in Naperville to a certain standard. Well, I understand completely he was very dedicated to baseball and was very dedicated to providing a, a solid program for, for the youth. Um, I, I do think that a certain sort of uh, public discourse, respectful um, way of addressing others, staff, as well as children, as well as uh, coaches, is really required uh, to pass that bar to be able to have a hard time there. Okay, so we'll put it on for a further discussion on November 15th, and then I'll encourage all the board members to continue to talk to people and do whatever homework. And uh, we'll uh, revisit it at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move forward to department updates, um, IT. Okay. Yeah, um, we have a black site test at Fort Hill on Tuesday night, which means all powers to get cut away from we have to be on site to make sure everything goes well. So um, that's part of uh, commissioning and everything. Um, and then we are working towards cleaning up after the season's over. So we just finished cleaning up the and taking down Centennial Beach, paddle boats, uh, things of that nature. We're also getting ready to do some server replacements. Now that the season's over, we're still very conscious of the operation hours at uh, Fort Hill. So that means any and all of the work that we have to complete is going to be done between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. So uh, <laughs> it's just the nature of what happens. Um, and we're also very conscious of staying away from weekends because then that would affect the cafe. So more than likely moving forward, um, you're going to see probably Monday nights, Tuesday nights be our major server maintenance, project work nights, uh, mornings. Yeah, so that's all I got. Thank you, <laughs> uh, Any questions? Okay, HRK. Okay, um, it's kind of a busy time of year. Our safety manager, Becky Cooper, is working with the um, safety committee and wrapping up the final details for our upcoming safety fair on November 3rd over at the Activity Center. Um, we're using this format to present the annual required safety training to staff. Um, Omar is one of the members of the safety committee and each member is um, taking a topic and will be presenting as um, groups of staff move throughout the fair. Um, we're excited about it to see how it goes. You know, the safety stuff, much like a lot of the HR stuff, is dry. Um, so we're trying different formats and um, trying to um, have more staff involved. On the wellness front, um, the on-site biometric screenings occurred last Friday. And um, although I wasn't there to participate, I've heard nothing but good things with the um, new organization that we had selected to do that. Um, staff really enjoyed the finger stick versus that stabbed. Um, and we got more participation because of that. So um, that went well. Uh, today, City hosted a um, lunch and learn over at the activity center. One of our own personal trainers actually did the um, educational portion of the lunch and learn. And from what I understood, because again, I was at something else, it, that went really well too. So it's really nice that we can use our own staff to help further the wellness initiative um, with the, um, the staff in the district. Um, we're also in the middle of a wellness challenge, and this is kind of a comprehensive looking at um, and it's exercise, um, nutrition, and then also just kind of personal wellness. So you're getting your seven hours of sleep and things along those lines. So staff can earn different point amounts for different things that they've done, and that we're halfway through that challenge already. I don't get the exciting stuff. Um, <laughs> we are. <laughs> I have been working on our. Um, group plan renewal, heading into open enrollment. And um, as you know, we joined IBBC for our health insurance last year. So nothing will be coming to you for an approval from that perspective for the PPO and HMO offerings that we provide to our eligible staff. But I wanted to let you know, and you, if you've heard the budget review, you've heard this already, so I apologize. But um, we, we're making some changes that will end up saving some money. We're changing on the HMO front. We're going from HMO Illinois to the Blue Advantage Network. Um, we did an analysis, actually IPC Gallagher did, um, to see if it would be an impact for our staff. And none of the staff are using those providers that they will not have in network access to. As such, our HMO premiums will go down 3% for next year, effective January 1st. On the PPO front, um, we're tweaking just a couple little things. The current um, deductible is $500, and we're going to increase that 100 to 600. So, um, you know, obviously staff that are using the plan, 
will be impacted, but those that aren't um, won't be. The other challenge, or not a challenge, well, it is a challenge. Uh, the other change is a change in the co-pays. Um, currently, we are at $20 for your primary care physician. That will remain the same. And on uh, the specialist, co-pays are at 30 Very often, it's about double to go to a specialist versus your primary care physician. So we are going to double the copay. So it'll be 20 for primary and then 40 for specialists. Making these two changes um, is a tenth of a percent reduction in the premium, so essentially flat. Um, so the nice thing that we're going to be able to communicate to staff is that, well, you've got a couple new choices. I mean, you might, some people may really like the idea of the HMO that it's even going down. Um, but they'll see their merit increases this year uh, versus it getting eaten up by the increasing um, premiums. The one thing that I will bring to the board for approval on the 10th is a change in our dental coverage. Looking to move from that life to emeritus. Um, the thing with dental networks, you get some overlap, but sometimes you don't. There are dentists, and actually my dentist and the kid's dentist, because of course they have to go to a pediatric one. I don't know why. Um, but neither of those dentists are in a network. Um, so that's not uncommon, that dentists just don't want to deal with that. They'll, you have to have uh, um, network benefits. There are more, and uh, sheer numbers, more providers in the Emeritus network. Um, they are duplicating our current level of coverage. And they also have a hearing aid rider, which will give some discounts for individuals that might need those types of devices. Um, making that change will save us, based on current enrollment, and things can change along the way, but if you took the snapshot, we're gonna save just a little over 8% on an annual basis. Um, and obviously, the staff will still contribute to the premiums there as well. Um, not making any changes to the vision plan, even though that's through MetLife. There's no change, even though we're going to be pulling the dental from them. Um, so those rates will remain fine. So on the group plan insurance side, we're going to spend a little bit less than 2017. As to any changes, you know, people electing new coverage and that kind of thing. So kind of exciting for me. But I'd just like to say, you know, with all that's going on with, with health insurance, to be able to say flat or you can save a little bit, I mean, that's, that's commendable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've been, it's been a tag team effort between Sue and I trying to talk through things, and um, Sue brought up Blue Man and Jetwork, we looked into it, and I mean, that's where the greatest savings is going to be. Good. Good. Very good. Anything else? No, I'm good. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to recreation. Brad? Yes, uh, we're getting ready to start up our first uh, youth basketball league uh, for grades kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, games will actually begin on Saturday, November 5th at uh, Fort Hill Activity Center. Uh, so far, we have uh, 471 uh, kids that have registered for that youth basketball league this wow. So we're excited to, uh, to get that off the ground. This is the first time now having gymnasium space of our own to be able to accommodate a program like that. Uh, we're excited about that to the community. Uh, we will be utilizing our cooperative gyms in addition to other gyms within the two school districts for practices throughout the course of the week. Uh, in the winter session, January and February, we will offer a winter uh, league as well. So this is the fall session of the basketball league uh, that we expect will be bigger. Uh, we have at Fort Hill an update on our memberships. Uh, we've been running an October promotion uh, since October 7th. We've had uh, over 300 new memberships uh, that have joined, uh, which brings us to 1,500 fitness memberships that are at the facility and over 1,800, almost 1,900 total memberships when you start to add in uh, the walk, jog, track memberships, open gym memberships, child care, so on. So we've been happy with the, the recent promotion. That will run through uh, October 31st. And what that promotion is, is 50% uh, off your enrollment fee uh, for uh, joining the, the fitness members membership. Um, and if a Chicago-based football team should happen to uh, win the uh, championship in baseball, you receive uh, the other 50% back. Um, oh, so wow. we've had quite a few people that have uh, jumped on that and have, uh, have been uh, we will have our next promotion in November, being a new facility. Uh, right now we're looking at about every month we're going to have a different type of a promotion to, uh, to get more people to the facility. And that will be a seven-day uh, free pass to uh, residents. 
So if you're a resident, come in, try us out for uh, seven days uh, at no charge. And then the thought there is that once they're in the door in the facility, that we'll be able to then uh, have them sign up as a, a focus one. So, um, and then we're going into a weekend full of Halloween events. Uh, starting tomorrow night, we have our first uh, spooktacular event. Uh, at the Fort Hill Activity Center, which will utilize the child care area, indoor playground, gymnasium. Uh, we have over 40 kids that have registered for that uh, so far. Our max is actually 45, so uh, we're almost full with that one. Uh, the Scarillon concert uh, is this Saturday evening at the, uh, the Carillon, which involves uh, both uh, playing of the Carillon, but also our Elon uh, dance company will perform. And then uh, Halloween happening, uh, our large event that draws uh, thousands of kids and parents and so on to the Grand Pavilion will be on Sunday afternoon um, from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, for that. And then based on the weather right now, uh, it looks good for, for each one of those days. On the, uh, on the November promotion, uh, I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but it is an idea would be to have it automatically, the membership, they put their credit card down, the membership automatically kicks in unless they cancel it. But uh, you're probably thinking of just, it's probably more disarming, just thinking out loud, yeah. by not having it done that way. Correct. What we will do is we are going to issue them a uh, membership card. Right. Uh, so that's what we would need to, to do the, with the, the barcode. So all of their information will be in the system and it will be very easy for them that uh, if they do want to then join as a member uh, afterwards, we already have all of their information. Right. To make it a smooth transition. So obviously the goal is not to just have freebies, but to convert them to right. whatever can make the conversion process easier. I think would be uh, make sense because they're already on top of that. I think as a public entity, we want to, you know, right. private entity, right. I totally agree. That's, right. that's the, that'd be the way to do it, but we want to very mild. Yeah. And we do have, uh, I believe I mentioned at one of the previous meetings that uh, even for the free resident track times, we have a large number of people that are taking um, we still issue a card for that because we want uh, people to, to come in, scan in, so that we can then track how often it's been used. And right now we're at uh, over 170 uh, that, uh, of residents who have actually gotten a card simply to use the track during uh, those free times. Have, have we done any outreach to any organizations, you know, any, any senior organizations that might be, might be interested in that? Uh, well, we've done a lot of outreach regarding the facility. Yeah. Um, the we sneaker. also recently brought on the Silver Sneakers uh, yeah. program. We are a Silver Sneakers facility, which that is very popular uh, within the senior community. We were getting quite a few requests for that. Um, that was just rolled out last week. Last week right. um, and you do have a lot of senior members, members currently, don't you? We have a large number of senior members. Um, in fact, just anecdotally speaking with the staff uh, at the facility, Right now, within our group fitness classes, that is the largest demographic that we have is uh, seniors who are participating in, uh, in our group fitness classes. So. But to answer your question directly, we haven't done that specifically, but we're only two months in. Right. I mean, there's been it's been constant marketing that yep. we've been doing, so there's always more to be done, and we'll continue to do that. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go to plan. Here. Yes, uh, one of the uh, capital improvement projects planned for next year is running uh, fiber optic cable from the Edmond building to Centennial Beach to the Riverwalk Cafe and the RCC facility. Uh, earlier in the week, Omar and I had a chance to sit down with city electrical department staff. Uh, very similar to the fiber optic cable connection in the agreement we have with the city for the Fort Hill Activity Center and then also executed an amendment relating to that agreement with the Knock Park Central Maintenance Facility. Um, the city of Naperville, uh, working with them, they may have an interest to actually construct or install that cable for us. Uh, we're going to work with them as far as the pricing. We want to make sure it's fair and reasonable. But one of the things, is, as far as the maintenance, uh, we have maintenance service charges for the existing facilities at Fort Hill and Knock Park. Uh, these are considered uh, secondary type connections. There would be no charge. So there's a lot of benefit for us. We're, we're analyzing the benefits associated with that. Uh, we're going to also sit down with DIRT and City Legal, and if it seems to make sense, we'll present something to the board, if not later this year, early next year, in preparation of completing that project. But we think it's a really good partnership. It worked really well for the Fort Hill Activity Center in Knock Park, but we just want to give you a heads up on that. Uh, secondly is the Knock Park Central Maintenance Facility Project. Everything's going extremely well. I don't know if you had a chance to drive by the facility. You probably noticed the steel structure going up. 
Uh, one of the key components of the project is bringing new electrical service to the site because uh, the old service wasn't large enough for the new facility. And uh, usually that takes about sometimes six, nine months. Uh, we're three little, th more than three months into the project, that electrical cabinet's already in. What reason why that's so beneficial is that uh, we don't, we're not getting charges from the construction manager or the construction contractors for temporary power because we had the main power source already on site. So everything seems to be going extremely well. Uh, the goal is to be under roof uh, by the end of this year. Uh, being a steel structural building, it, it's a lot different than like our Fort Hill Activity Center uh, project. So uh, everything's moving along, but I'll continue to provide updates to the board uh, as part of the uh, workshop discussion. Thank you. Moving on to finance. Oh, excuse me. Uh, parks and golf. No respect. As far as parks goes, we're mainly focusing on our fall activities now with the remaining staff that we have. We really wish the grass would stop growing, but it just keeps growing. Um, yeah, the leaves aren't changing as quickly as we'd like to, you know, so the season is prolonging, is all I can say, which is very good for golf, though. Right. Because then, right, right, right. Could lead into golf, um, because golf is doing well. The, the way that the weather's been, uh, if you look at the forecast, we're into the first week of November with fit for with very favorable temps. Um, as of right now, Maplebrook has exceeded budget for this year as far as revenues goes, and it's given Springbrook the opportunity to get caught up as well. We also ran several specials in October. We call it an, uh, a golf tober fest where uh, uh, rates are reduced, there's specials on food and beverages and whatnot. Uh, so it's really been a success. This year also was the first year for a fall junior league over at Nickelbrook. They had they averaging over 30 participants on Sundays, which ended up being very, very well for us. And last, uh, golf is preparing for the turkey shoot, which is the weekend of November 19th and 20th. And thanks to Sam's team, Jewel Osco of Naperville is donating all of the turkeys. Oh, wow. Which is, which wow. is a huge help. And all of the proceeds from that event that will, will be given to the foundation. Wonderful. Yeah. And that's it. And what is a cross country turkey shoot? Basically, they, they, they establish nine holes averaging five, six, seven hundred yards. And you walk across fairways, they link two holes, holes together. And it's a best ball shoot with a five, uh, maximum of five team, five people. So you're you're using a course but not necessarily the traditional holes, right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, it's chaos. Okay. It is it's chaos. chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Riley described it correctly. It is chaos. Okay. <laughs> and somebody gets a turkey. <laughs> Everybody gets a turkey. That's right. If they choose to take it. That the end. That is it. Thank you. Then we go to finance. Yep, uh, we just wrapped up the 17 budget um, and we're starting to work on the three year plan um, and our presentation to you on um, November 2. So, other than the usual stuff, that's the other thing. Good. Very good report. <laughs> <laughs> 50 words of this. <laughs> okay, marketing. All right, um, we're currently interviewing for the sponsorship manager position. As you know, Brett Lindell left last week. And in the meantime, I'm pinch-hitting for those duties and working a lot with our sponsors. Fall and obviously the holiday season are big times for sponsorships, so there's a lot going on in our department right now, but it's exciting, it's fun. We're also wrapping up the redesign of the program guide. A um, new look will roll out with the winter 2017 edition, which is going to be released on November 30th, and if you recall, that's going to be a full color, our first full color edition ever, so that's also very exciting. And then lastly, we are starting to set the wheels in motion for the 2017 State of the Park District Address, which will again be in early February. There's going to be more to come in the near future. Met with uh, President Janner and Ray and one of my staff people to start talking through some kind of cool new ideas that we have to change things up a bit. So more to come on that. Will WMAN be making an appearance? I can't divulge it. Neither confirm or deny that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jack, you got anything for administration I here? I do. It's parade time again. All right. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So 
One of our normal standard parades that we participate in is the Parade of Lights, which is on Sunday, November 27th at 6 o'clock. Yeah, the Young and Altigan Parade of Lights? Yes. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> Before I register, because I have another week or so, is that something you're interested in? Well, it's sitting in Jackie. November 20, Sunday, November 27th at 6 o'clock. Now, our police department is in it, and I, uh, Magical Starlight Theater has contacted me twice. They would like to walk with you or oh, whatever. Okay, so, Cause that's, that's been one of the things. Yeah. If, if it's just you know five of us walking, nope. you know, Brittany but if we has, get a program out there, that, that makes it sense. Yeah, so, Brittany, let me yeah. know that they're very interested in participating okay. with you. What's their show? Is it like Susical? Susical. Oh, oh, it's Susical. Yeah. Yeah. So, I will go ahead and register you, and we'll include that group with us. Yeah, I'm out of, I'm out of town. I am also. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm already afraid of me. I can move around. Okay. So we'll, we'll make it happen. Great. Okay. And we'll be Jerry. In here. <laughs> Jerry's volunteered for everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. The announcer should announce the Starlight Theater, the commissioners. Or something. You can do it that Just way. Just, you know, because you're not going to have seven. Certainly, right. you might have five or four. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, don't see any other agenda items, so we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn the October 27, 2016 regular meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.